Right, during a visit to Occupy Atlanta protests, uh, uh, the, the uh, Occupy Atlanta protests, Reverend Jesse Jackson compared the Occupy movement to the civil rights struggle. It's about justice. Right. It's about the American dream. It's about the hope that we all long for. 48 million Americans in poverty, 15 million who have no job. That is the heart of the civil rights struggle. Because Dr. King's last effort was a poor people's campaign. It's about a moral commitment to defend the poor and to deliver the needy. But is that a fair comparison? Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece, Elvita King, joins us now. Elvita is also the director of African American Outreach for Priests for Life. Good morning to you, Elvita. Good morning. It's wonderful to join you. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. So when you heard Jesse Jackson <coughs> compare the Occupy Atlanta, Wall Street, Chicago, Oakland movements to what your uncle was doing in society, what was your first reaction? Well, I believe that Reverend Jackson is doing a disservice in this century. He is a 20th century civil wrong leader in this point. You see, I marched in the 20th century as well, and now in the 21st century, picking up the mantle for even the youngest, you know, from conception until natural death, life. But my uncle, the whole movement was founded in prayer and in crying out to God in a peaceful movement. And this movement is not peaceful. You know, I really, the people who came out who are genuinely frustrated, who want a change, they need a leader who's going to lead them peacefully, to not encourage them to be embroiled in all of these things. And I think that ACORN is somewhere in the mix with that, too. And my uncle certainly could not have condoned uh, voter fraud as ACORN uh, was uh, charged with and all of that. So I think Reverend Jackson needs to revisit his 20th century history. Alvita, and would you see what a mess Zuccotti Park is? Now they have effigies of, of President Obama. So it, it goes across both parties at this point. And there's massive arrests, 20 in Atlanta yesterday, 100 in Oakland last, Oakland last week. And yesterday, Jesse Jackson, I understand, was part of a group that took over a bank for an hour and just started singing songs and disrupting things. And they keep doing things like that. Well, actually, during the civil rights movement in the 20th century, and we are modeling that, the civil rights movement now, which the pro-life movement is also put, picking up, prayer, um, peaceful, nonviolent movement, order, you know, and to really help the people. The people started this in frustration. They wanted something uh, that would give them solutions, mm -hmm. something that would make things better. And what they're doing now, Reverend Jackson knows that this is not the model that my uncle and my father, Reverend A.D. King, upheld. He knows right. that. Well, I found it interesting because in that particular clip that we played, Jesse Jackson did say the American dream. We've heard that before from your uncle, I have a dream. I have a dream. Well, the is, dream is there a similarity certainly. there? I mean, what, what would your uncle do with these Occupy protests? What would he do? If my uncle were here today, my father, Reverend A.D. King, if I were able to join them, I'd get on my knees and I'd begin to pray. I would sing the Bible-based war songs. I would assure the people. I would cry out to the Lord to help us. Now, you know, we shall overcome. God is on our side. We'd be doing this peacefully. We would not be inciting the people to, to the type of anger that destroys. And that's really what's going on with this. And it's not helping the people. Right. And, you know, the people are hurt and they need help. Not to be incited to, to be violent, no. Alveda King, thanks so much for giving us your perspective. We'll look forward to tracking uh, all your movements because you're not sitting idly. You're, uh, you're in action. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much.